Thank you for being here. Nice to have you with. I know it's uh, tough when uh, it seems like everybody we know is on vacation, and here we are. So I really thank you for being here. If you're watching us on Facebook this morning, I thank you for joining us as well. Uh, I'm going to talk today about being partnered with God. And uh, where this comes from for me is that, you know, Ernest Holmes, the founder of our church for many years, he had a radio show, and he would always begin his radio show with this phrase, that there's a power for good in the universe, and you can use it. So we're supposed to have access to and use this power. That means we have to be in relationship with this power. And what, of course, is the power for us in Science of Mind is God. We say God is a principle, a power, and a presence that's absolutely everywhere, but most importantly, it's within each of us. It's within our own heart, mind, body, mind, uh, in the essence of our being. Um, but first, before I talk more about that, I want to say one thing about being part, uh, before partnered with God. Uh, there was a 12-year-old boy, and he was asked to complete the saying, the journey of a thousand miles begins with, and his uh, response was, a broken fan belt and leaky tires. <laughs> yes, okay. So um, I understand uh, that he came from uh, a home that uh, that was not the most important thing, but hey. So partnered with God, here we are. Let's talk about this, that I believe for each of us, uh, we are never alone. Because we believe in the science of mind that God is everywhere equally present. That means there is as much God right where we are. In the circumstances that we are evolving and healing through in our life right now, there's as much God, as much spirit, as much truth there as there is anywhere. It's just our job to remember it, to call it forth, to connect with it, to be a place where that truth comes forth into greater expression. You know... Um, for us, as students of new thought philosophies, we believe that God is bigger than any uh, one religion. In fact, the way I like to say it is the reason there are so many paths to God is because God's the only place to go. You know, and eventually, 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 I think people are going to figure that out. Um, frankly, people who don't believe in something greater, um, that's really interesting to me. I, I, I think it's amazing that they are able to get through life with any semblance of sanity at all. Um, now, I would say that, you know, I grew up in a, in a home where we went to church. Church was a regular part of our life, and I really liked it. I mean, it stuck for me from a very early age. My mother would say, what happened to my other kids? And I'd say, I don't know, but you took me to church, and I loved it. And she said, yeah, I know, but what about the, I, I can't speak for them. I can only speak for me. There was something in church, and honestly, for me, my experience of church, it wasn't so much what happened um, during the service. After the service, I liked to sit in the church. Uh, because I felt like there was something more than was being talked about. I knew there was something else. I just intuitively, I knew there was more. But nobody said it. Nobody, nobody could talk about it. And when I would ask about that, I'd usually get smacked on the head and said, nice boys, don't ask those questions. So that kind of put an end to what I was hoping to have a little dialogue about. Um, anyway, where was I going with that? Um, so uh, I... Um, Although I personally like to focus on the teachings of Jesus, uh, I know that the teaching of new thought and religious science certainly includes the teachings of Jesus, and yet it is also bigger than that. Well, why? Because, because the principles that Ernest Holmes focused on, these universal spiritual themes, and that's what they are. They are universal. They're not something that shows up in just one teaching in one place on, on the face of the earth. There are things, there are common spiritual denominators that Ernest Holmes pulled on from different teachings. So I'm interested in following those teachings in a deeper way, and Science of Mind has given me the vehicle to do that. Jesus said a couple of things that to me are so, so important. He said that I and the Father are one. I and the Father, Mother God are one. And he also said, the Father within you doeth the works. So I'm interested in living from that kind of a place. You know, Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. And wonderful Julia Cameron, who we love, I teach her Artist Way class here every couple of years, said an unlived life is not worth examining. And I think that's even better, you know, because I don't want to be that person who my life is, is mostly unlived. So I asked myself this morning, you know, where do I shrink? Where do I hold back? Where do I play small? Um, where do I care too much what other people are thinking? Um, you know, and where do I have that, that uh, universal doubt that I'm not enough and there's not enough and I can't do it alone? 
You know, the truth is we don't have to have any of that. That is all learned behavior. We did not come in as a spiritual being carrying any of that kind of dialogue. That's something we picked up along the way. And like I like to say, if we picked it up along the way, we can set it down anytime. In fact, any time between now and right now would be the perfect time to let go of that kind of thinking. That we teach in Science of Mind that one with God is a majority. So that God puts opportunities in front of each of us to stand strong in the presence, in the knowing of truth. right? To rise to the occasion. Or the way I like to say it is, we get to be big for God. So if God and I were partnered, what would I really, really do here in life? Mm -hmm. um, with, with the person I, uh, I, I love the most. Um, how would I be as a person who says I practice forgiveness, you know, if I were partnered with God? How would I be in my compassion and kindness out to the world if I really knew that I was in partnership with the divine in this way? See, if I believe I am partnered uh, with God, I think that shows up in every area of our life, that you know, my health is not my health. My health is something that I am in partnership with God, co-creating on a daily basis. In fact, on a moment by moment, thought by thought basis. My relationships are something that I am co-creating with infinite spirit all the time. My, my financial condition is something that I am in the process of creating with God. All If I were left to do it by my own, at some point I'd just be so exhausted, wouldn't you? You know, I think like, oh, I'm so tired. You know, can I just hang out in the commercials for a while? But the answer is no. No, this life is not a dress rehearsal. This is the performance right here, right now. This is it. We are right now in the life that we have been waiting to live. So um, the, uh, in the Psalms, David wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I think that's fundamental to how we're supposed to, how I try to live my life. Um, so years ago at uh, our, what was our national summer conference, Asilomar, um, I had uh, an appointment with a woman, her name was Vitura Papke, and she had the honored distinction of being Ernest uh, Holmes' practitioner after his wife Hazel passed on. And so I'm having this meeting with Vitura, and um, I, uh, I was really miserable in a job I was in. And so I did what you do when you go to a practitioner, and I sat and complained about my situation. And I complained with enormous feeling, because I really wanted to convince her how awful my job situation was. And she, in this wonderful, kind way she had, just let me talk and talk and talk and talk. And finally, she looked up at me and said, are you through yet, dear? <laughs> and I thought, yeah, yeah. And she said, good, because I have something I want you to say. The whole time you're here at Asilomar, she said, every time you're tempted to think negatively about your job or that you don't have the job you want or anything like that, so what I want you to say is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Do you think you can do that? And I said, yeah. And she said, good, I thought so. You seem like a fairly smart boy. <laughs> and uh, so I thought, well, you know, she seems to know what's going on here. I, you know, I may as well just do what she says, right? Because clearly doing it my way had not worked so well. So I walked around the grounds of Asilomar all week long saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, mind you, this is up on the Monterey Peninsula. It's a, an, a, a, a state-run uh, camp facility. And um, by the end of the week, I had two job offers, <laughs> one of which I actually took, and it's where I worked for the next three and a half years. So it absolutely, absolutely worked. Why did that work? Because she had greater faith in the principle than I did. I was in a, a, a phase of my life where I was really growing my faith, but she really, really knew. And so I could build my faith banking on her faith at that time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And you know, that has worked out really, really well for me all through my life since then. You know, that living with God is, uh, I think I want God to be like the steering wheel, not the spare tire. You know, because left to my own devices, humanly, I only know so much. 
you know? But I know that there is a principle and a power and a presence within me that does know everything I need to know. And if I will turn to it with some degree of regularity, with some consistency, it will reveal to me everything I need to know, everything I need to do, everything I need to be in any given situation. Mm -hmm. um, it's often, you know, I think when we hurt, that we, uh, when we can't control what's happening, that, that people start to look for a relationship with something spiritual, yeah? Many people come to science of mind because their life is in transition. You know, there's been a big change, there's been a death, there's been a divorce, there's been a career change, what have you. You know, and so people come to church and what they want initially is for the pain to go away, right? I certainly do, you know? But to just make the pain go away isn't actually going deep enough spiritually to get the real gift of the teaching. See, the pain can ease for us, but we haven't really come into a kind of partnership with God, with spirit. You know, sometimes people imagine if they do spiritual work that that's going to be like their bargain with God, that, you know, things are going to be easy because I do spiritual work. In a word, ha, <laughs> right? You know, this, uh, that is not my experience at all. It really is not. But the way... Uh, uh, because I think, you know, we, we're so trying to avoid those unpleasant things, you know. But the resistance is in us, right? And that resistance that's in us keeps us from moving to a new place, a healed place. So I want transformation, but, you know, I want it to be easy. That's, that's really, that's my story. I, I, I'd like everything to be easy. But, you know, most things worth having, it seems, are not easy, no, it's just not so. I want things to be easy, humanly. I want them to be convenient. I want them to be comfortable. That is not my experience of the spiritual path. Sometimes it is, and I'm thrilled when it is. But I also know that the way the universe seems to get my attention the most is through things that are not always the most pleasant. You know, if I, if I could, I would learn all the lessons I'm learning in life by watching a beautiful sunset and holding a baby or getting a new puppy and all of those things that I really, really love, right? But in most cases, those things are not the best uh, teaching opportunities for me, you know? And as much as I love the sunset, my life doesn't usually change because of a glorious sunset. Now, when something happens in my life that shakes me up, that really gets my attention. Okay, now I've got to look at what do I need to change? What needs to be different in me? Um, uh, I try to partner with God every day, and I fall short. You know, I remember I do my practice in the morning, I meditate, I treat, I affirm, I read, I visualize, I journal, I, 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 I have a big practice that I do, and yet I can be out 10 minutes after I've done my practice walking my dog, and I forget that I just did a practice. I forget that I just did my spiritual practice. So um, this morning, um, I did my practice, and then I took my dog out for her walk. And while I'm out walking, and this is just me, probably nobody else gets uh, thrown by this, but I see other people who have walked their dogs, and um, let me just say they have not been the responsible dog owners that I think everybody should be. Yes, they have left little breadcrumbs in their path. And, um, and it just makes me crazy. It just absolutely makes me crazy. Mm -hmm. And so rather than go to crazy town on this, what's the better thing to do? Well, the, so I, because I have options, right? I can step over. I could reach into my pocket because I pretty much always have plastic bags on me. You know, it's, it's like parents have Purell and wet wipes if you have children, right? I always have, you know, I, I, I'll be in church sometimes. I'll say, what is that in my pocket? I'll reach out and say, oh, I've got four plastic puppy bags. How nice, how convenient in case I have to use them in church. I don't know what, what I say. <laughs> so anyway, so, so I, could, I could step over. I could um, pick it up. I could pick it up and throw it away. There are always more options. And you know, so this morning, and this is not like a how great am I, this morning I decided I'm just going to pick it up and throw it away, and, and I'll feel better about 
my life, the world, the sidewalk, and humanity, and all that stuff. So what I noticed is doing just such a very simple little thing, I felt better. Right? I didn't do my whole walk with my dog, cursing out the person who wasn't being responsible. Because, of course, you know, I'm making all that up. That's all in me, that somebody didn't do something or blah, 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 blah. You know, if there is a design in the universe, and I believe there is a design in the universe, you know, because this is a universe of magnificent order and beauty. You know, they say if the Earth was one mile closer to the sun or one mile further from the sun, it would be impossible for life to exist here as we know it, right? So there is a perfect design unfolding here. If that's happening on Earth, it must be happening in each of our lives as well. Uh, you know, I think it's sort, of, um, it's sort of like a child's view of the world, like maybe like a preschool view of the world, that if I have a relationship with God, nothing I don't want will ever happen. Uh, that's not true. I think a more mature relationship is whatever happens, I will be able to move through this because I'm working with a principle and a power and a presence that's within me, you know, and, and so I'm not alone. I'm working in partnership with this divine activity. So if I asked you this morning to think about, like, oh, very quickly, name the last 10 presidents in order, or how about the last 10 Miss Universes, right? Or how about the last 10 Nobel Prize winners for literature? or the last 10 Super Bowl winners, OK? In order, right now, right now. I mean, we might not have all of that. And, I'm, and, and don't use your phone, OK, because that doesn't count. But if I asked you this morning to name 10 people in your lifetime who have really touched your life in a significant way, in a way that your life was never the same because they shared part of the journey with you, um, you'd be able to come up with those 10 people very quickly. If I asked you to say, in your lifetime, tell me, who have been the five best friends you've ever known? You would be able to come up with that, because that's really personal. If I said to you, who are three people in your life, from the time you were born into this earthly life to where you are today, the three people you think have made the biggest difference in your life? You would have those names. I'm certain you would. You might have to think for a couple of minutes about it and say, oh, I forgot. That's right, them. They made a big difference. See, I think we would have no trouble remembering them because they touched our life in a really significant way. And if they did at least in those moments, then I believe that they too were partnered with the something greater that we call God. So a minister I know told this story about a woman uh, and her mother-in-law. It was her mother-in-law who... Um, who really, really loved God. Now, the, the mother-in-law had passed, and a person got up at the memorial service uh, to speak who had been touched by this woman. Uh, and it was her son. You know, and so he shared childhood memories, and, you know, she, uh, and one of the things she had done was that she read to him from the Science of Mind textbook when he was little. And I thought that was just fantastic. But, you know, in the course of his life, he was an individual who lost his way. Like, so many of us do at different times. We lose our way. We forget what we're here to do and where we're headed. And so this particular man, he uh, lost his way and got seriously into drugs and alcohol. Um, and he stole from his family, including the grandmother. Um, his wife left him. He lost his job. He had no place to live. He was in his car. Uh, and he, he still had a cell phone. And, uh, and that's where he would get his messages. And so um, he got a call. He got a call, and uh, the message said, I know you've done some bad things, but that doesn't make you a bad person. I love you. Now come home. And of course, that was his mother, right? And she wasn't saying, just come home to our house, but come home. Come home. And you know what that did? That did something so deep with him that, that, that she loved him and was inviting him back, regardless of the dumb stuff he'd done. You know, because we've all made bad choices, right? It, but, but that stirred something in him, and he called the sponsor, and he went to a meeting, all because she was partnered with God, I believe. So I think, you know, it's... Um, 
It takes a spiritual foundation of daily practice for us not to indulge our fears, not to get caught up in the negativity that we see around us. You know, to remind ourselves, you know, I don't have to do this alone because in truth, I am never, ever alone. Right now, where you are, just as you are, you are loved and enough. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward for a moment to just be still and remember the spiritual truth that God is right where we are. That each and every one of us, we are emanations of the Most High God. That spirit, consciousness, love, and intelligence within us is the most true, real thing about each and every one of us. And so in this awareness of our connection with God, with spirit, with truth, I also know that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. That in the mind and heart of God, there's only one, and we are all it. So I speak the word for each and every one of us today, knowing that as we move forward in our life, that we are truly partnered with God, partnered with spirit that we are not going through any of what we go through alone, that there is a principle, a power, and a presence at our disposal. And I claim for us today that we make great, intelligent, loving use of this power. Like Ernest said, there's a power for good in the universe, and you can use it, and we do. We use it creatively and constructively and lovingly and intelligently. And I know for each and every one of us, healing is taking place wherever that needs to be spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, in every area of our life. And so we include in our prayer this morning our family members, our parents and children, all of those that we love and hold dear. And we remember that God, that truth is right there, that they are surrounded and filled with an infinite loving presence just as we are. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So all of those things that grab at our attention, all of those opportunities to reconcile our faith, we say spirit is right there. Truth is being revealed as harmony, as all needs met, as peace, as new beginnings. I claim this as the truth. And we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today that there is raising up, there is healing for everyone, and we say yes to it. We welcome it. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth right here, right now. It could not be any other way. And I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.